the, those castings are also quite important because you want to transfer load into the structural battery pack uh, in a very smooth, continuous way. This looks like a normal structure, a panel, a beam, a floor, but it's hiding something. Inside is power, actual electrical energy, stored not in wires or boxes, but in the material itself. No plug or battery pack, just structure and charge working as one. It's called a structural battery, and it doesn't just store energy. It holds your car together, maybe even your phone or an aircraft wing. What if energy weren't something you had to carry, but something built right into the frame? This isn't science fiction. It's already unfolding. And what comes next could reshape everything we build. Let's dive in. The two-in-one dream. Imagine if the skin of your phone, the shell of your car, or the wings of a plane could do more than just sit there. What if those parts weren't just passive surfaces, but active energy sources? That's the vision behind structural batteries. They don't just store power, they are the structure. One material doing two jobs, not tucked away in a pack or hidden beneath the floor. No extra compartments, just the thing itself, strong, supportive, and charged. Right now, we build everything the same way. The battery is one thing, the frame is another. We stack, we layer, we add weight. Structural batteries flip that idea. They say, let's stop stacking, let's start merging. It's not just a clever trick, it could be a game changer for design, especially in things that move. Weight matters, space matters. Every extra gram makes a difference. A two-in-one solution? That's not just innovation. That's efficiency at the level of physics. The real-world impact. The benefits aren't just theoretical. Structural batteries could quietly transform how we build the tools and machines around us. Imagine a laptop that weighs half as much because the casing itself powers the screen. A smartphone so thin it slips into your wallet, yet still lasts all day. Or an electric car that goes farther on the same charge. Not because the battery is bigger, but because it's everywhere, in the roof, the door panels, even the floor beneath your feet. This kind of design doesn't just save space. It changes the rules. Lighter vehicles mean less energy is used. Less energy used means smaller motors. And suddenly, everything scales down. Less weight also means more speed, better handling, and longer range. It's a ripple effect that starts with one core idea, let the structure work. But the real promise lies in flight. Airplanes are the ultimate test bed. Every ounce counts. If structural batteries can cut weight and hold power, electric aviation might finally take off, literally and financially. It's a future that doesn't need brand new shapes or wild redesigns, just smarter materials doing more than one job. The swelling problem. But there's a catch, one that isn't easy to design around. Batteries don't just sit quietly when you charge them. They change, literally. As energy moves in, the internal materials expand. It's subtle in your phone. But if the battery is also the body of your car, that swelling becomes a serious threat. Imagine the floor of your vehicle flexing every time you plug it in, or worse, weakening over time, quietly warping with each cycle. That's not a minor glitch. That's a risk to both safety and structure. And then there's the other nightmare, dendrites. Tiny metal filaments that grow like frost inside some batteries, eventually piercing layers and causing short circuits. They're rare, but when your battery is the structure, rare isn't good enough. Balancing strength, flexibility, and safety isn't just tough. It's a puzzle that most materials can't solve on their own. The Kist Breakthrough South Korea's Kist team may have found a key piece of the puzzle. Their approach isn't about wild new materials. It's about making smarter use of the ones we already trust. They started with carbon fiber, a familiar favorite in aerospace and automotive design. Strong, light, reliable. Then, they added something unexpected. Energy. Instead of layering a battery into a structure, they built the battery as the structure. They used epoxy resin to give it strength and a solid-state electrolyte to make it function. Nothing exotic. But here's where it gets clever. 
By precisely controlling temperature and pressure during the curing process, they eliminate nearly all internal air pockets. That makes the composite smoother, denser, and far more reliable. Their method used vacuum compression molding, a process that shapes materials under heat and pressure. It's already common in industry, which means this isn't just lab magic. It's scalable. And the result? A carbon fiber battery with over 160% more fiber volume than previous designs. That's not a small step. That's a leap in both mechanical strength and energy storage. Suddenly, dual function isn't just a buzzword. It's becoming real. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Swedish Upgrade Across the continent, researchers in Sweden are pushing the idea even further. At Chalmers University of Technology, a team has spent years refining structural battery materials, and it's starting to pay off. Their secret? Control. Not flashy breakthroughs. Just relentless attention to how resin flows, how fibers align, and how each layer bonds under pressure. They use carbon fiber, too. But in their design, those fibers aren't just providing strength. They also act as part of the electrical system, carrying current while holding everything together. Meanwhile, the electrolyte woven through the structure lets ions move freely without compromising integrity. Not long ago, their structural battery hit 24 watt-hours per kilogram. Not bad, but still a long way from lithium-ion. Now, they've nudged that number to 30. Still behind, but closing in. More importantly, their latest material isn't just lighter, it's stiff enough to rival aluminum. That opens doors to serious design swaps. They estimate it could shrink a smartphone to the size of a credit card or give an EV up to 70% more range without a bigger battery. Those numbers might shift in real-world tests, sure, but even a fraction of that improvement would be a big deal. Supercapacitors take flight. In the world of aircraft, every gram matters. Engineers weigh everything, literally. So when Emil Greenhalgh's team at Imperial College London proposed turning structural parts of a plane into energy-storing components, people paid attention. Their focus isn't on traditional batteries. It's supercapacitors, devices that store and release energy quickly, though not as densely. Planes already use them for emergency systems like automatic door releases. But most of the time, those supercapacitors just sit there, doing nothing, taking up space, adding weight. Greenhog's idea? Make the structure do double duty. Take something like a fuselage beam and design it to store energy. That way, the part itself becomes functional, not just in shape, but in power. Their prototype is surprisingly thin, just 7 millimeters, but holds stacks of energy layers inside. It's made from carbon fiber electrodes and a high surface area carbon aerogel, striking a balance between strength and capacity. It's not powering jet engines yet, but it doesn't need to. If it can handle safety systems, it could quietly start changing how we design aircraft piece by piece, layer by layer. Cars are already doing it. This isn't some distant idea sitting in a research lab. Structural batteries are already hitting the road, literally. Take Tesla. Their newer models like the Cybertruck and Model Y are starting to use battery packs that double as part of the vehicle's frame. It's not just a convenience, it's a design shift. The battery isn't being added to the car, it is the car. This cuts down weight, increases rigidity, and makes manufacturing simpler, at least in theory. Tesla isn't alone. BYD, one of the world's biggest EV makers, has been working on structural battery tech since 2020. Their blade battery is long, thin, and strong, perfect for sliding into a car's underbody without adding bulk. They're already producing vehicles at a massive scale using this system. It's not perfect yet. Costs are high. Manufacturing is tricky, and scaling up is a slow climb. But we're no longer talking about maybe. It's happening. The auto industry is starting to treat batteries as more than just power packs. They're becoming part of the frame, part of the plan. What's still holding us back? 
So if structural batteries are already on the road, why isn't everything built this way? Because it's still a balancing act. You're asking one material to be strong, light, flexible, safe, cheap, and powerful all at once. That's a tall order. And every small improvement in one area tends to cost you something in another. Manufacturing is another hurdle. These materials require careful curing, exact pressures, and clean environments. That's fine in a lab. On a factory floor, it's a challenge. Scaling up while keeping costs down is what separates clever ideas from global adoption. Then there's safety. A traditional battery can fail without threatening the structure of your car. But if the battery is the structure, one crack could mean both a power failure and a physical collapse. And when it comes to flight, the stakes get even higher. Aerospace is slow to adopt new tech, and for good reason. You can't afford surprises mid-air, so the potential is real. Is this patience required? Also very real. What comes next? The idea of structural batteries is no longer stuck in science fiction. It's inching into factories, prototypes, and production lines. Tesla's already using them. BYD, too. Researchers are scaling up performance, but the real question now isn't if, it's how fast. Can these materials become cheap enough for everyday use? Can they handle years of wear, impact, and weather without failing? And can they be produced at the speed the world demands? The future might not look like a huge battery strapped to a machine. It might look like surfaces, plain panels, and frames that quietly power everything. Your next car, phone, or even home might store energy inside its walls, not in a separate cell. The technology is still maturing, but the concept? It's solid. And once the trade-offs shrink and the methods scale, we may stop thinking of batteries as boxes and start seeing them as part of the very shape of the world around us.